Hello everybody, it's me, Eagle. Welcome to a tutorial. That's right, players, it is Warboss Tay, Igor, Lewis, ah, and Commissar Bane. And we are here to uh, welcome you to a tutorial. Haven't done one of these in a long time. We're going to see how it goes. And we're going to be using this Strelek Dwarf from uh, the Cyborg Boyars. So the colors we're using are Rhinox Hide, Mornfang Brown, Xandri Dust, Bugman's Glow, I'm using this black from Vallejo, but really, I, it's just because I couldn't find my Abaddon black and I had that line around. Any Anyone is, is okay. Lead Belcher. I try to use mostly Citadel colors. I don't know why, because this isn't even a Games Workshop figure. So you could use the Vallejo equivalents, anything you want. And I'm also using the scale color uh, gold colors. So this is one called Necro Gold. And... I'm not sure if I use Dwarven Gold in this one. Rackarth Flesh. If you want the Games Workshop equivalent, it would basically be if you took Retributor Armor and I think added a little bit of black into it to darken it up. So, all right. Um, one thing we do not paint is this little nap nappy sack because this model doesn't have it. So if, if you're going to be painting these guys, and for anything, if you have a guy that's wearing this thick, dark brown kind of le leather overcoat and you want to paint a different colored bag to make it stand out, then you can use a color like XV88. And uh, you could use any of the beige colors. The two washes we're using are Agrax Earthshade and Wraithland Flesh Shade. Here's our model. And uh, you can tell it's nice and shiny because I just finished applying the shades. At the beginning of the next video, you're going to see that the shades have kind of dried and uh, when they dry they do not shine as glossy yep there's that dwarf in gold so we're turning around this is what it looks like i'm actually doing this for, more for myself to kind of inspect and make sure there's no really deep puddles of wash because the, you definitely don't want that all right here we go it has been so long since i filmed one of these i can't believe it's been so long and uh, I've just been so busy with the studio, the May Painting Challenge 2016. Everything is just piling on commissions and um, just work. So I wanted to do this because this is a uh, technique that I've kind of figured out for myself after watching a bunch of videos and kind of pulling things that I liked and uh, techniques that I wanted to replicate. So this is basically how to do a kind of like a, a dark reddish brown duster or overcoat or any kind of like heavy duty workman's leather leather kind of brown coat and it could be a, an apron you could use it for like pants or a backpack we're using it on this street like because this model is uh, wearing this dark brown overcoat and um, it's, it's actually good for me because my client for this commission requested that I kind of follow the cyborg art and the cyborg examples. So this is good because I thought when I was looking at it, oh, I haven't really done a tutorial where so much of the model was covered in this very thick, heavy material. So the goal with this tutorial is to kind of give you a feel for how I do thick, heavy cloth or uh, leather like this, it's a, a little bit different than doing a soft cloth. Like when you think of the Empire Spearmen or the uh, State Troopers, their tights and their uh, tunics are very, you, we, you want them to look soft. The same as if you're painting a, a damsel for the Bretonian range, you want that gown to just kind of shimmer and look very soft. With this, I wanted to give the effect of a hard, tough material and it, the Sculpt helps a lot because as you can see, it looks, these doors look very beefy, stocky and heavy set. And it looks like if you took off this heavy leather overcoat, if the weather was warmer and they didn't have to wear it, then it looks like this dwarf would be pretty beefy and chunky underneath of it. Now, Rhinox Hide is the color that I'm using for the boots. And let me explain the reason why I went darker is because it helps to build the color up when you're starting from the bottom of the model and your eyes kind of look 
vertically. If you're somebody that looks at a model starting from the bottom up, then you see these big chunky, the toes of his boots sticking out from the his trousers or the bottom of the overcoat. If you're somebody that looks from the top, which is, I think most people look from the face or the head or the helmet down, then uh, you kind of want to start with a lighter color and kind of end up with this dark, dark color at the bottom. Conversely, you could also go with light colored boots if you if you wanted to kind of go against the grain. But if you were going to do that, I would kind of stay away from the this kind of beige color range. And by that, I mean the, the brown beige colors that Games Workshop provides us of Steel Legion Drab, Rackhearth Flesh, Mornfang Brown. You want to kind of go against those and do something that's like a pure white or or like a lighter color that is totally different from, from the brown, like a blue or a green. So because we're kind of trying to stick with the same color palette, we want to be nice and dark and go from Mornfang Brown to Rhinox Hide. All right, we're using our black now to color all of the hair. And I think I mentioned in another video, it's probably the un unboxing or one of the other videos where I highlight these models. Black is my chosen color, not only because it is the color that you see all of the models with on the Cyborg website, but also because these models really remind me of the Chaos Dwarf models the Chaos Dwarf aesthetic, their beards are braided or they, they look like they're in like long dreadlocks and plated and cinched at the bottom and uh, they've got the, the tall hats which is another for me obvious reference to the old Chaos Dwarf models and I think black also looks the best. If you had gone with blonde hair, a dirty blonde hair, uh, it would look too much in color, uh, too similar in color to the uh, to like the hat, which we're going to be painting in an, a light bone color. It would look just a couple of shades lighter than the coat itself, and I think black is a very good uh, contrasting color for that. Especially because there's lots of gold on the model as well. The metal we're using metallic gold. The uh, blonde hair would blend into it and it would all look a little too washed out. Speaking of the big poofy hats, we're going to use Zandri dust now to paint the hats here, the tall hats. And uh, I found a trick whenever you're painting textured surfaces like the hat here um, to uh, start from the bottom and or the lower areas and then drag the paintbrush up rather than starting from the top and then dragging it down. Because if you start from the top and drag it down, you catch a lot of the texture from the uh, from the higher areas of the textured surface, and then you miss a lot of the creases, the recesses, the, uh, the under areas. If you start from the bottom of the hat and then you work your way up, that paint will get stuck in those shadows, in those recesses, as you're pulling the color up towards the top and there's a lot less chance for you to uh, for you to have any of that paint kind of uh, stuck where it, it shouldn't be. Okay, next we are painting the flesh color and I always thought that Bugman's Glow was a little too red as, as a color for the skin. I always thought it was a little too rosy, but I think the reason why Games Workshop went with this color at least this is my <laughs> my justification for it. If it's totally wrong, then uh, I wouldn't know. But if, if I was a designer, and I thought, okay, what do we want to do with our skin? We want our skin to look very pale and build up to like a, go on a yellowish, orange, peach kind of tangent, which you can see with the Cadian flesh tone and the Kislev flesh. They look much more pale than the old uh, elf flesh, than the old, gosh, I don't remember what was above Talarn Flesh, but Talarn Flesh was was a little bit more beige and, and ivory colored than Bugman's Glow. I remember the first time I used Bugman's Glow, I thought it is just so pink and so reddish and, and ruddy looking, and uh, I, I didn't understand why they had chosen it as a base color. And I think it's 
mainly because they don't they, they want you to build up off of it they want that bugman's glow to just kind of be that first color now the trick whenever you're painting in like a model with a big huge beard long hair and uh, just a little bit of surface area for your skin tone is you're probably going to get some of that flesh color on the beard now the reason why i did the beard first was because i wanted to cover the most area because this was a a tutorial i haven't done a tutorial in so long i just wanted to cover the huge areas first and the beard obviously is a big big area the skin tones there's surprisingly only three areas on this model where you can see skin colors and that is the uh, the eyes the nose the cheeks like the, the face area but not even like you don't see the lips you don't see the neck you don't see the uh, anything like the ears so it's really just like a small area of the face and then the two hands and this is true for all the Strelak models so uh, I wanted to do the black first because I, I felt like I wanted to cover more more area if you want to not have to go so far back then maybe you want to start with the with the uh, skin tone okay uh, what I'm showing you now is there's a chain mail little uh, piece hanging down down the front this model that I'm painting does not have it but you would also paint lead belcher there the other area of lead belcher is the barrel of the gun and now I'm going to show you the games workshop equivalent of what we're going to be using it's retributor armor now it's a little bit yellow and it's a little bit bright for the gold that we want to that we're really going to be painting with so um, if you want to kind of follow the building up process you want to add a little bit of black to your retributor armor but what we're going to be using is this scale color and I cannot stress how much I love this kind of uh, triad it's not even a triad it's one two three four five six seven eight colors that all go together to kind of create different effects for your gold it says on the box and in the instructions that uh, you want to use an airbrush for some of these but I found that hand painting them is just as effective if you are I guess careful and if you are very selective about which areas you paint in what steps I don't know if you heard my lady boss sneeze just now she has a pretty she has a pretty mighty sneeze she also blows her nose like an elephant I love it it's my little Dumbo <laughs> Okay, so uh, the gold I'm using is called Necro Gold, and uh, that's what it's called on the on the um, box. But I was looking for it on the I was looking for the the title on the label, and um, I I didn't see it. But it is called Necro Gold. It is the darkest gold, and I I think it kind of looks to me like a uh, Retributor armor or the old uh, Shining Gold from Games Workshop with a lot of black mixed in. So the areas that we're going to be painting in gold are the back part of the blunderbuss, the dragon's head right at the barrel. You also notice that the dwarfs themselves have interesting gold armor placed over their bodies. Right on the front of their ha uh, hats, there's a gold plate. And this model doesn't have it because he's got his arms kind of over his chest area, but all of the other models have a gold breastplate and kind of torso plate hanging down above the chain mail and uh, here you see me make my my biggest cardinal mistake in this first video I am painting the area that kind of got painted over with Zandri dust the Zandri dust is still wet I was a little impatient I didn't want to wait for the Zandri dust to dry I just kind of started going at it and uh, you shouldn't ever do that I was so excited to be filming my first tutorial in so long I think it's been over a year. Igor, do you still even remember how to use this camera? Barely. Igor, where have you been? Oh, around. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, it's we got to make our May the Fourth video. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm painting the top of his hat in Steel Legion drab. There's a little bit of a a cloth right over, over the fur in the center there so I'm just painting that Steel Legion drab and I think I'm just looking at the model now we're moving on to our last couple of steps here so I decided before the wash that I was just gonna highlight up the skin and then use the wash as more of a unifying tone for the skin color now another way you could have done this is just left it at Bugman's Glow 
painted on the Raiklin flesh shade, but I decided to do a highlight step, which uh, you don't have to do and is a little bit more work. But for me at this point, I thought, oh, it's it's okay because there's so little bit of flesh, there's so little color, this flesh color on the model that um, it's it, it was, I guess, uh, not a difficult choice for me to spend the time doing it. And I'm painting these for commission at a war boss level, which means I want them to look good on the tabletop. They are going to look, every every mo surface of this model is going to be painted when you pick it up and turn it around and look at it from every angle. And so uh, this really wasn't too much of a of a sacrifice or, or even a sacrifice at all. I just thought, let's do it. Let's make it look good. So when you mix in your highlight color to your base color, in this case, Rackart Flesh to Bugman's Glow, you don't want to immediately go 50-50 and just make this huge jump in color highlight. I, I tend to, whenever I'm painting something organic like skin or something that has a, a gradual kind of shift in color, I just like to add in a little bit at a time. Now we're painting, I believe that was Dwarven Gold. There's also Viking Gold, which is a, another lower color. And if you're going to be painting using Games Workshop colors, I'm pretty sure that you could do get the same effect by adding, uh, gosh, what would it be? Not Ulrich Armor Gold. It's, it's, it's the new Shining Gold. It's been, man, it's been so long since I painted with the Games Workshop gold paints. Uh, basically, if you want, you could you could also use, um, I think Balthazar Gold as well. It's not as yellow. I, I would kind of mix Auric Armor Gold with Balthazar Gold to get a, a, a kind of mid-tone because we are kind of building up the yellows. So when I'm painting the gold highlights, I want to leave the darker color there and especially there's so much great detail carved into the the lower part of the the gun that's why I wanted to do this model because you can really see that detail so I'm leaving it kind of open and I'm also painting and you see that most of the dwarves have little gold ring clamps on their beard so that's gonna get the same treatment as well Okay, we're just making sure we're hitting all the areas. I've mentioned this, oh gosh, I've mentioned this a lot, but if, if there's anybody new out there who's watching this video that has not seen any of my other videos, what I use to hold my models is a cork, a piece of cork. You can get it from any hobby store or arts and crafts store. And uh, you don't even have to use cork. You could use like an empty paint bottle or a prescription pill bottle. You just put some blue tack or poster tack on top of it and attach your model to that. It's a lot better for your fingers. You don't want to get like uh, arthritis or, or carpal tunnel syndrome. It's really easy to wrap your hand around. So I, I highly recommend it. It's my, it's one of my biggest tips because I started painting with night goblins. And let me tell you, they were on 20 millimeter bases that were so small and I gripped each of my hundred something night goblins by the base and my, my knuckles on my fingers were so jacked up by the end of painting that army that I, I just was not uh, was not feeling I wasn't happy with it and then I actually found girl painting was the one who turned me on to this cork idea and I saw it and I was like what is that what is she holding her models on master you're not explaining about the agrax earthshade ah thank you Igor I'm painting agrax earthshade onto my model and uh, very tricky, this guy, because he's got lots of folds in his overcoat. Big, uh, I guess, long lengthwise folds where the, that wash can just sit and dry and leave this nasty looking oily residual sheen. You do not want that. So every time you paint a wash, you always want to make sure you can kind of uh, monitor as it dries the colors so that it doesn't pool in any specific area. So you, you notice right now there's a lot of, and on the left side of his coat right by his foot, 
uh, the lower part of his jacket and there's very deep pockets where the wash can pool. We want to just avoid that as much as possible. You don't want to get that Agrax Earthshade on the gold, but it's okay if you get it on the silver. It'll make it nice and dark and oily looking. And you basically want to get it on everything else. The hat, the leather overcoat, the boots. Um, if you're painting a model that has the chest area open, you can paint the chainmail, the silver chainmail. Just try to avoid getting this on the gold. The gold you want nice and and shiny. We're building up that gold uh, luster reflection and uh, anytime you get any kind of wash on a metallic, if, if it's not something specific like the silver, which is uh, we're saying is okay to be nice and oily and dark and, and uh, have that kind of look to it, the gold we want to remain kind of pristine. All right, zooming back in now, you can really see the detail and uh, you can your eyes can pick out where that wash has gone. There are some tricky areas like under the collars, anywhere where you don't naturally see unless you flip the model and you're looking at it from below. And you want the wash to get into every kind of crack and crevice of those areas because that's where the shadows would naturally lay. And that's why we choose Agrax Earthshade because it looks like a shadow when placed in this on this kind of brown and uh, beige model. The last color we're going to be painting on for this video is Raiklin Flesh Shade. And sorry, uh, I apologize for the little blurriness. Every time I kind of move the model, it, the camera goes out of focus a bit and it takes a while. Igor, focus the camera. Yes, master. Igor, I see even with the year out of practice, you are you're still quite quick with that autofocus. Oh, I can't be master. Usually though, I just kind of zoom out. I, sometimes I even leave my post and go looking for cats to play with. Of course, of course. All right, so that's the end of our model and that's where we're gonna pick them up next time in part two. So join us for that one. Thanks for watching. I'm on um, Google Group, of course, obviously here, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Warbaste. And if you like this video, Click the like button, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, everybody.